So let me talk about that old piano. Some of you actually figured out that it is a Mason and Hamlin piano. I've actually never played on one to my recollection. It is an American brand. So I opened it today and took a closer look at the piano. There are a lot more different patent dates. You guys were right to point out and correct me actually that the year 1900 and that date just refers to the patent date of this part of the piano. It's not made in 1900, but based on the serial number, it's probably 1929, 1930, but that's still a pretty old piano. This brand actually started out making reed organs and it was known for organs. And then in the late 1800, they started making pianos. And it's interesting because so many of you use the word mellow to describe the sound of this piano. And you don't usually think of organs as being mellow. So I thought that was kind of ironic. But speaking of organs, this brand, Mason & Hamlin, actually supplied Franz Liszt organs, which I think is pretty cool. But back to the piano. So a couple thoughts that I have. I think I really love old piano sounds. I just think that they have so much more soul in them. I know I'm talking about pianos like they are humans, but they are to a certain extent. That's how I think of them. Is that weird? Probably. I really like the... It's so hard to describe. It's just, it's so much more, it's just there's something about the quality. It's like, okay, maybe it's just because I'm hungry, but it's like something that is well seasoned versus something that's just one flavored. I'm talking about food because I'm very hungry right now, but ah, this might not be a good description of the piano. But okay, here are some more concrete examples. Some of you thought that the recording sounded muddy and maybe it had to do with the bass. So I definitely think the bass, here's an example. It's very muddy, but that's just perhaps the piano's own characteristic, own personality. But I really do like the middle range and it can create a very sweet and singing tone, which I think fits really well, especially working on this cello sonata by Rachmaninoff. Still a work in progress. Another thing that I figured out, a lot of you said that it sounded like the piano itself had its own reverb, and I think it has to do with the dampers and the slower release of the dampers on the string. So it cuts off the sounds slower. And when I was trying to do staccato, like just testing out here, You can hear the lingering sound after I release the key, which is good and bad at the same time. It's great for doing more lyrical and legato phrases, but it might not be super for, you know, staccato, like Bach kind of Baroque music. And speaking of Rachmaninoff, did you know that he actually recorded his second piano concerto on this brand of piano? So. You know, there's some merit to this brand of piano that is not really 
well known? I don't think so. Maybe it is because some of you guys <laughs> have heard about the brand. I just have never really come across any of their pianos. But here's another characteristic that I really like about it. Some of you also said that the top register is not super bright and you guys prefer modern pianos that have much brighter sound. Here is where I would say it's the difference between a piano or I was about to say a piano that's just super salty. Think of your favorite dish. It's the difference between that dish being just one flavor like super salty or like super bright versus another dish that's, you know, got its own variety of flavors and nuances. This is that type of piano. Did that make any sense? Maybe I should not be filming when I'm super hungry, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get through it. <laughs> Please excuse my food metaphors. <laughs> the higher register I find to be the right amount of brightness for the things that I'm playing. Obviously, if I'm going to be playing with an orchestra, especially in Rachmaninoff's concerto, in the second and the third, there are parts where he would have chords and you're supposed to be somewhat over or on top of the orchestra, maybe this piano won't necessarily ring on top of that kind of situation, on top of a huge orchestra. But what I really appreciate about this piano is it's got different characters within one keyboard. And on the top, yes, it's not the brightest, but I do think it still sings out and it's not too bright to the point where it's really harsh, like stabbing in your face or your heart when it's fortissimo it's like ah <laughs> so this piano is not like that but you can hear that even though it's got a relatively murky bass on top with this kind of trouble actually works quite well i think but here is another excerpt of the cello sonata which is so beautiful by the way And the last thing that I want to talk about is, is action, which some of you asked if it was slow or fast. You know, I actually didn't really pay attention too much to the action and the speed because I was just enjoying its sound so much, I just wasn't paying attention. But then yesterday I practiced about four hours and today I found myself really tired for some reason. And then I was paying much more attention to the action. I don't know if it's just because I was kind of tired, so now I can feel the heaviness of the action, or maybe there is some truth to my experience, which is that towards the bass area, it's a little bit heavier, but it might just because people tend to play the higher register more than the bass, and so the more you hammer it, the looser it gets, and the faster the action in a way. But I would say it's not really hard, it's not really quick like the Wagner piano that I played on. It's just kind of a medium. Maybe it's on the slower side, but then again, I've been working on really romantic and lyrical pieces, and so I actually don't mind that slower action. But I do have to say, it was a little bit tough for me to jump around with the staccato in this Brahms concerto place. <laughs> possible that the piano does have a slower action, but that's not to say that I blame it for my inability to play staccatos or whatever. The way I think about pianos is that as pianists, we should be able to adapt to whatever piano we encounter. 
and we just have to embrace and work around and work with the kinds of different personalities. Just as we should treat different people with respect, I think we should also treat different pianos with respect and give them a chance. Unless they're out to kill you or eat you while you're playing them, there's really no reason to not try to appreciate the piano or try to work around it. That's just my thoughts and I'm kind of weird, so <laughs> take it as you will. <laughs> but anyway, here are some clips of the city because I'm currently in New York and because you will be seeing this on Christmas, I thought I would film some stuff around the city to show you guys what it's like here around Christmas time. I hope you enjoy. I'm not a filmmaker, but you know, I tried. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video and for supporting me. By the way, because of you guys, I have gathered enough funds to buy a new computer, so I will be able to make vlogs much faster. So I'm super excited about that and thank you so much. Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas and if not, happy holidays. I hope you guys have a good time with your family and friends and I will see you soon. I'm not sure what I'm doing next yet, but I'll keep you posted. So make sure you subscribe and I mean, have some relaxing time, but also don't forget to keep striving. Bye.